Um, I'm going to walk you through a couple of things with Active Directory and um, what I'm going to call auto segmentation. Um, so um, this is obviously related to Z scanner private access. So um, everything in Active Directory um, kind of relies on DNS. Active Directory is is built on on LDAP um, as a directory store for all of the objects. Um, and you know, there's a couple of things that happen that are kind of important to how a Windows client enumerates its domain. You know, what domain controller should I talk to? What is the closest domain controller? All of those kind of things. And that starts with um, sites and services. Um, sites and services basically um, tells me I've got a bunch of subnets. Um, the 192.168.1.0 slash 24, 192.168.2.0 slash 24. I've got a couple of subnets to find here. Um, and basically, we then have some domain controllers or some servers in these different um, sites. And England as a site here is defined as being um, these two subnets, uh, 1.0, 3.0. Um, and Wales is defined as uh, 2.0. And so basically, if my IP address is in that range, 2.0, I am in Wales. And therefore, the domain controller I should talk to is wdcwelshgeek.net. Um, nice and nice and simple. Um, if I'm in the 1.0 or 3.0, I should talk to these two domain controllers. Um, there's a couple of other things that happen. Um, I'll do a DNS SRV lookup. Um, and the SRV request will say what domain controllers are available. Um, and I'll get a, a list back in that SRV record. So it's a couple of things, DNS, then I connect, then I'll figure out what site I'm in. And all these things have an effect on services like um, SCCM. What distribution point should I connect to if I'm in England or if I'm in Wales or however these sites are defined as. Uh, locations could be a city or a, or a, um, a, a building within a city, um, depending on how customers have built this out. And so with ZPA, it's really important that we understand that the app connectors need to be in these ranges um, so that we can figure out that we're in England. So the, in my case here, I would need a, um, an app connector in one of these two ranges, 1.0 or 3.0. Um, and, you know, because the user is natted behind, the user is presented by the connector's IP address. So when the client says, what domain controller should I talk to? It's based upon the IP address the domain controller sees the user coming from, which is the app connector. So those, the, these things are intrinsically linked. So it's, it's important that our app connectors are in the sites. You know, um, we could go to the extreme of saying, well, every site should have a, um, an app connector in it. Or we have this uh, concept here, an inter-site transport. Um, basically saying what is the what is the distance between sites what is the distance between England and Wales or maybe I create a site um, close to England let's call it Scotland um, where we put our app connectors and that has a distance of zero to England so they're in a different site but they're geographically close so so we would return the uh, servers in England if there were no servers in Scotland so so these things are, are, are relatively linked um, Obviously, everything is, is related to DNS. So here's my welshgeek.net domain, and I've got a whole bunch of entries here. I've got um, some hosts, A records, uh, our, our IP addresses. I've got some aliases, some C names. Um, let's go back over here. So, um, you know, MSOID, these things are important. GUAC, which is my guacamole server, is a C name for the exporter. Um, Enterprise registration is a C name for the ADFS server. So these things are, are again important. These are the hosts that I'm advertising. Um, but under under here, um, there are some automatically created things. Um, uh, site discovery services um, is the parent. Um, we can find out sites. So England, um, TCP. So what we can say is if I look up LDAP underscore LDAP, underscore TCP, England, underscore sites, WelshGeek.net, I'll get this answer. It'll tell me that um, DC3 is the domain controller we should be talking to um, for that. Um, these are built by Active Directory. Um, so we have server records, A records, C names. Um, and then in Active Directory, users and computers, we've got all of our users, but we've also got um, computer accounts, 
and domain controller accounts. So we know what are domain controllers in the domain, what are computers, how they relate to DNS. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. Um, we need to think about these things. These are ultimately the things that could end up being discovered and put into Zscaler private access. So with that in mind, if we know this information up front, why do we wait for discovery to happen <coughs> and segmentation to happen on the back of that? Um, so what we'll do is we'll come across here and I'll show you what Apache Directory Studio. This is basically an LDAP browser. It's browsing, um, it's connected to my Active Directory and I can see these things as LDAP objects. I can see England as an object um, under uh, the configuration, sites, England. Um, and it tells me the site and it tells me um, the subject, uh, the site object BL, um, the, uh, the um, common name essentially, um, and part of that common name tells me the, um, the site object, so basically tells me the CEDA ranges that are associated. Um, so I should know, uh, I could query this and say, well, what IP address ranges should I put my um, connector in for it to be in the England site, in, in the England site, and therefore be able to connect to the England domain controllers? Um, and I can do the same thing for Wales. Wales is that 2.0. So this is an LDAP object. The other thing that are LDAP objects, if I'm using Microsoft Active Directory for my DNS, are all my DNS objects. Here's the DNS zones, WelshGeek.net, um, and then we can see um, all of the objects under that. Um, there's my ADFS server, and if I look at the um, the object, uh, oh, come on, huh, interesting. Um, there's a reason why I'm not seeing the entry. There must be a reason. Um, I won't get into why that is. Oh, there we go. Here's DC2. I don't know why that other one wasn't showing up. Here's my DC2. Here's the, the distinguished name. Um, and if we look at the um, DNS record, this is the binary data, we can see that uh, 01, that's um, an A record, and this is 192.168.1.15. Um, no, it's not. Uh, 14 uh, for my ADFS server. Then, yeah, 15, yeah, 15, 14. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the intricacies of uh, hexadecimal. So uh, all of these things are objects. Um, all of these things are queer things that I could query via LDAP or via DNS. Um, so if I, with that in mind, how can I use the Zscaler API to, to, to manage this stuff? So um, here we go. We've got a bit of uh, Python here. We've got a config file, we'll read in the um, things. We know my domain suffix is welshgeek.net. I know my client ID and client secret, I've got a company ID. My endpoint is um, ZPA beta for this example, and I've got a bind username and password for LDAP. So I can take this, um, take the suffix, split it down. I can um, build a um, distinguished name for that site's configuration, welshgeek.net, blah, blah, blah. The same here, dc equals welshgeek.net, cn equals Microsoft DNS, domain names, plus this distinguished name, dc equals welshgeek, dc equals net. Customers would need to adapt this into their specific um, organizational unit and how their AD is structured. Um, but then I can do a DNS lookup. Um, I can, and this is the SLV record for underscore LDAP underscore TCP welshgeek.net, and that's gonna give me the domain controller, um, nice and simple. Um, that I can then create the LDAP bind to, and then I can say, well, give me um, everything. Give me um, things apart from the default first site. That's where everything gets dropped if we don't know where it is. So we don't care, really care about that. So give me all the sites, and give me the common names of the domain controllers and the sites objects, what, um, what subnets are available for those. So I can take all of that data, and I can then go ahead, and I can create app connectors. So I can create an app connector dynamically in each of those sites. Create a connector group, um, create the provisioning keys, create the server group. So a single server group containing all of the app connectors that are available that can see Active Directory. And we know that Active Directory servers should all be able to see each other. If they can't, customers have a more fundamental problem. 
And once I've done that, I can create all of those um, directory, those uh, AD servers and create a single segment with them all in, with all the right ports, including um, the RPC ports and the DFS ports and things like that, um, and go ahead and do that. Um, so I create a segment there. And then what I can also do is I can query into Active Directory and say, well, just give me every single object that's in DNS, that's not Tombstone, it's a DNS node. Um, I'm specifically interested as well. Once I get that data back, tell me the things that are either A records or C names. I'm really not interested in TXT records and SRV records and things like that. Things that are actual objects that users would connect to. Um, once I've got that, I can create a list um, and then I can create a new segment that includes all of those things. We'll go port 1 to 65535. If there was other data available within those um, DNS records that told me it was a web server or something else, um, I might just say, just configure it with port 80 and 443, or just configure it with these things. Um, I could even then create the policy on the back of that and say, well, this web server should only be accessible for um, third parties via um, CVI. I can do all of those things automated by querying Active Directory, and these things are really interesting. Um, and then we can link those through to the attributes we get from SAML and Skim and, and, and do other interesting things there. So I've walked you through the the what's going on um, and why I think this is important. Let's go ahead and uh, kind of demonstrate this. So um, just to show you, I've got my app segments. Uh, that, or I haven't got any app segments. I haven't got any segment groups. I haven't got any... Um, um, I'm going to cloud connectors. I probably do have cloud connectors. Sorry, I haven't got any um, app connector groups defined, and I don't have any um, server groups defined. So, basically, a blank canvas. Um, if I then go, uh, we need to go into ZPA segment. Um, if we run that fully segment, it's going to read the, the that configuration file, read in my um, domain. It's going to output to the screen the sites and services, or the sites and subnets. There we go. We know that England is those uh, subnets. We've read this from um, Active Directory. We've created um, those, and it's gone ahead and segmented. Now, if we um, jump back into the App Connector groups, so I've now got an App Connector group for England and Wales. Um, and you know, there's very little data in here. Maybe I should put in the IP ranges in, in the comments or something like that. But we know that England connector should be in one of those two subnets and Wales should be defined as one of those two subnets. Um, so we define those app connectors. I've now got a server group, server group called Active Directory that includes England, Wales. It's important that both should be able to see every single um, domain controller and everything in Active Directory. It's relatively uh, a rooted network, a flat network. Um, and then I've got my app segments. So the Active Directory server, I've only got one domain controller in my example, um, but it's available from both of those sites and we've got a server group. Um, and then I've got another one which is auto created DNS. So these are the other things. These are the things that are not that. If we look at those segments, it's, it's pulled out a load of things. Now it's clearly pulled out some desktops, um, some, some of my access points and uh, some other bits and pieces. Um, but it's also pulled out uh, my ADFS int server, so internal facing, external facing ADFS servers, um, my other domain controller, or, uh, which is not a domain controller anymore, which is why it's there, the servers. And we can pull all of these things out from, from DNS, uh, from DNS via LDAP to create these objects. So what we're really demonstrating here is you can fully automate the provisioning of ZPA. We know we can create app connectors, but let's create them programmatically in the right places. Give the customer the, the ability to just think, oh, right, I've just got to spin these provisioning these connectors up. Drop the right provisioning key on there. The one in England has this provisioning key. The one in Wales has this provisioning key. They will auto-build, um, and then we've got a fully segmented um, environment. And rather than necessarily waiting for discovery, we can pre-discover and pre-populate those segments. And if we have some intelligence, we can even constrain the ports and write the policy that goes along with that. Um, obviously, this is helping for a brownfield site, but for a greenfield site, it's even uh, even more interesting as you go into that DevOps process. Hope this is useful. Um, any questions, let me know. Mark at zscaler.com. 
Um, you can uh, get all of this from my uh, GitHub, the uh, Welsh Geek uh, slash GPA scripts. Um, and this one is under um, ZPA segment, and that's the full segment. Um, anyway, marketzscaler.com. Cheers.